Praise the Lord, saints of God. Today, I'm going to give you five reasons why we that love the Lord and we that have been called to work the fields for our God should not wear outward adornment of clerics, robes, collars, uh, gold chains, long flowing robes. We should not do this. It is a gateway to God's uh, wrath. It's a gateway, and I'm going to explain why I say wrath, because God is a jealous God, and he will not share his glory with you and I, and when you and I continue to do things that he has told us not to do, and he gives us very clear reason why, because it stirs up pride. That's why we don't do it. That's why we shouldn't do it. It doesn't matter how many denominations who the bishop says that he is and how many follow him, Jesus is our mentor. Jesus is the person that we are to mimic and parrot our ministries after. And Jesus condemned uh, the Pharisees for wearing long flowing robes. He warned us in the book of Matthew, he warned his disciples and said, beware, chapter four, beware of the scribes and Pharisees who like to walk around in the marketplace is in their long flowing robes. Why did he say beware of them? The same reason he's telling us today, and he's given me this green light to, to bring this before the people of God, is because it opens you up to pride, vainglory. Friend, you can't put on a long flowing robe and, and be honest with yourself and admit that you are not self-conscious when you do that. You and I are aware of ourselves. When we begin to put on these things and walk out in front of the people, we're very aware of ourselves. And the person that we are actually trying to kill is the old man. The old man, the old nature craves attention and recognition. But to be workers of Jesus Christ in these fields, it has to be stripped. I want to give you very clear a uh, reasons why you don't want to indulge. And if you are a young preacher, don't do it. Come out of those denominations that lift this stuff up. They lift this practice up and they lift up men who carry on with this. Friends, you're going the wrong way. The number one reason God says to declare that this must be rooted out and thrown down and destroyed amongst his people is because it encourages deception. When I put on a vestment, a, a clergy, a collar, a robe, I am I am causing you to immediately think that I am a religious, pious person. And when you do that, people tend to let down their discernment and their their um, um, wisdom um, to, to be wise because most people automatically think when they see a person in these clerics and these robes that they're spiritual and they're someone that you can trust. So it encourages, it, 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 it causes people to block using their God gift of perception and, and intuitiveness. It is blocked. Because you got this robe and collar and you're sashaying around, the people are blocked from using perception. Perception is lost when a person is weak, when a per person is wounded, when a person is a young Christian or a follower of Christ, and they come in the midst of this type of person, they are all automatically thrown into a space of intimidation a place where they're looking upon you in awe. And the only person that we want to look in awe is our Lord and Savior. Because no one that's walking in robes and collars, I don't care what denomination, I don't care if you got 20, 50,000 people following you, you are anti-Christ in this behavior. You are against him. The number one reason is because it blocks perception. It gives a false appearance because many people, my friend, and we don't have to mention denominations, but you all know of many false religions and denominations where these people who do this and carry on with these robes and collars have gotten into all kinds of scandal, all types of everything going on underneath those robes and those collars. Because why? It encourages the outer court. It encourages carnality. It encourages the pride of your life, that you are so proud that you've been ordained or whatever is your reason for going through through all this ceremony to dress up.
Number two is simply against Jesus. Jesus would not be known in a crowd. We would not know who Jesus was. And I'm going to prove it to you, even not only Jesus, but the prophet Elisha. Elisha was going through a city called Shunamma. And the Shunammite woman told her husband, because Elisha kept coming through there, they were a wealthy uh, couple. She said, mm, I perceive this a man of God, and we need to fix up a little space for him so the next time he come, we're going to hook him up. So this gives us insight that these prophets, and let me tell you, Elisha, he did more miracles than Elijah. Elisha had it going on. But this, this scripture, it renders to us, when you study this about this Shunammite woman, Elisha was not putting on any airs. He was not wearing a certain type of vestment. He was not um, speaking a certain type of language. This woman had to perceive it. So my friend, if Elisha, the prophet of God, who we can chronicle some serious miracles, in fact, Elisha is one of my favorite prophets, what are we doing? How can you justify you wearing collars and robes carrying on like this? You cannot justify it. I have another one. The Bible tells us that Samuel, the prophet of God, was God had spoke to him um, the day before that the 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 day that was coming that there was going to be someone coming that he had anointed to be king over Israel who we know was Saul and the bible says that after Saul's father's lo father lost his donkeys he and one of his father's servants went looking for these donkeys and when they came up to the prophet at the gate of the city he asked Samuel come on this is in first Samuel chapter 9 uh Saul said he and his servant he said do you know where the seer is He's actually talking to Samuel, the prophet. He didn't have a clue that Samuel was the prophet of God. Why? Because they were not walking around investments, putting on airs. These men, listen, my friends, when you are really walking in your anointing as a prophet and you are mature, I'm not saying that people that do this that may say they're prophets. If you are mature and you really understand the seriousness of being in the ministry. You do not put on airs. You do not do that. You don't draw attention to yourself. You don't pass out a business card, I'm the prophet of God. You don't put on these vestments to show that you're the grand pooba in the midst of the people. Friends, you're being deceived. It is pride. It is vainglory. And if you suffer mental illnesses, and you're behind closed doors popping pills and taking antidepressants, and you're going sitting on somebody's therapeutic couch paying them $200 an hour, my friend, you have lost the glory. You're in trouble spiritually because God resists the proud. He is not going to tolerate our parading, our exalting ourselves, our self-aggrandizing. He's not. I'm telling you, my friend, if you deal with not having God's joy, all of this high and low, and you don't have no control over your soul, friend, check this area of your life. Strip. Come out from these denominations. Because, friends, where they push this, they are, are, they are in error. They're in error. And let me tell you, my friend, the benefits of walking with our Lord and Savior is peace. He said, I'm going to give you something the world can't have it. I'm giving you me, the Prince of Peace, saying, I'm going to give you a piece of me. You're going to have my peace. And when you don't have it and you are walking out in these, quote, ministry gifts, because some of us, you've been called, but you have not been commissioned by Jesus. He is not giving you a green light. Jesus don't give green lights to, to people who are trying to usurp authority over him. No. So I'm going to tell you, my friend. If you are carrying on this way or you are in a denomination, come out from among them because God is not there. There ain't no glory in it. In fact, many of the bishops in our nation who have, who have admitted to having nervous breakdowns, who have lost their minds, there are, three, there are two people that I could tell you right off uh, my memory who the, who the Bible clearly tells us God judged them. And one of them was King Saul, who later on, he was rebellious. He went crazy. Insanity is God's judgment. You are not on the Lord's side and you're losing your mind.
Come on, you're having what we call nervous breakdowns. No, God is judging you. King Nebuchadnezzar is another one that comes to my mind. He went crazy. Why, God, don't like pride, my friend. Check this area of your life. Burn up those collars. Burn up those robes. Get rid of them. Burn up those business cards. Bishop so-and-so, strip. I'm the reverend, I'm the most high, I'm the master prophet, strip, take it off. Number three, when you are wearing these vestments and all this outward adornment, it encourages blindness. You will become blind, my friend. You become desensitized. desensitized. You grieve the Holy Ghost. You will grieve him and he'll walk away from you and you will not have his peace, joy. You will not, you will not have faith. You're just going through the motions. And what you are feeling that gives you some sense of awe is the fact that you have people following you around. People, people, your followers. They're not Christ's followers because those that are sincerely endowed with the spirit of God, we follow after Christ. He said, my sheep know my voice and these strange voices, we're not going to follow you. Number four, it is a subtle form of witchcraft. You are using manipulation through outward adornment to manipulate and to get people to look upon you. It also emanates from the spirit of Haman. Remember from the teaching I just did the other day, Haman wants worship. Friend, when you walk, listen, I seen a, a very uh, popular bishop here in our city. I saw him at a marketplace where grocery stores and craft stores, he gets out of his car in a black robe with a hot pink beanie. He had his, had his gold chain walking through a marketplace. My friend, this is sickness, sickness. This man is a known now homosexual, smoking cigarettes. Get back in the car. I see him a couple of weeks later. I see him. He don't see me. He's sitting in his car smoking cigarettes. This the same one walking and parading himself around. Everybody looking at him like, wow, there's, wow, he must be important. He's a bishop. No, this is sickness. You are sick. Listen, my friends, I'm sorry. God is no respecter of persons. I got to tell you, if you are carrying on this way with these robes and collars, and chains in your right and left pocket, you are spiritually sick and you need to repent. Number five, the reason why we don't do this is because the moment you put that collar and that robe, you are self-conscious. And we want to walk in the spirit and where the spirit is, we are God conscious. That's what it is to walk in the spirit. To walk in the spirit is to walk in the awareness of God. I can't do me and him at the same time. And when I'm putting on my false glory, come on now, because that's what it is. You are encouraging Jesus to, 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 to move away from you because he's Lord. He is the only one worthy of honor and praise. So my friend, there is your five reasons why. It's a dangerous thing. It is played out like an old eight-track tape. That's played out, friend. This, this, all these robes and carrying on, that is played out. Wake up, friends. He loves you. He doesn't want to judge you. And the proof is in the pudding. How many bishops and so-called prelates do you know that have lost their minds behind closed doors? Why? Because you. it's only one Lord. His name is Jesus. And once you find your king and, and you, you get upset because people don't want to bow and worship this madness. This is madness, friend. He loves you. Repent, strip, burn all that stuff up. Get rid of it. Walk lowly. Put on the garment of Christ's righteousness. That's the only garment that we are to wear is that robe of righteousness. We wrap our mantles, our gifts, our talents, our skills. It is all wrapped up, tied up under this cloak of righteousness. No other garment do you put on but that robe. I love you, my friend. Till next time, be blessed and be wise.